construction of RPD module in DRD8005. Hi, uh, when you hear this video, uh, this is probably the our first time to meet with each other. Some of you may heard my name or some may not. So let me quickly uh, introduce myself. Uh, I'm Dr. Huang. Uh, I originally from Taiwan. Uh, it's a small island on the Pacific Ocean, it's very close to Japan, Korea, and China. And right now I'm a clinical faculty in the UDN Dental School. Uh, so I'm not quite often in the sim lab or uh, in the lectures uh, classrooms. However, I will take in charge of uh, your RPD uh, sections this semester. Uh, so first beginning, you might heard uh, your senior told you that the removal partial denture is very difficult. It's hardly to understand it. The reason is uh, because just like if you don't really see an object and you just use your hand to f touch it to feel it and you might just uh, notice it's just part of it but you have to really able to combine all together otherwise uh, just like your graph shows if you just touch the tail of an elephant it just looks like a snack it's not an elephant so you have to really touch the leg touch your nose touch everything so you have to combine all the information together that's why they make it make the RPD part very difficult. So in this um, semesters, you are gonna deal with the partial dentorism uh, sections, which related to the removal of partial dentures, and there are three uh, specific topics related to this uh, project. So first is about the component, it's about the terminology. You will hear a lot of things that you never heard before. And the second will be the biomechanical uh, topic. So it's not just understanding what we talk or what we describe the RPD. It's also related to some mechanicals and biologies part you have to understand. The third one will be related to the treatment planning or the clinical procedure. Without knowing three of those, then you will not be able to get familiar with the uh, removable partial dentures. So we will go through that uh, in the lectures and in the scene lab and try to uh, have you get used to this topic. So if you review the syllabus, you can see uh, we have two different uh, parts. One is the lectures and one is the scene lab. So first of all, we will use uh, several um, uh, lectures to introduce the terminology. So we will have you familiar about the terminologies uh, related to our uh, object. And then we will dis discuss the philosophy or the uh, biology and the mechanic behind the concept. And then we will go into uh, the scene lab and start it to uh, have you uh, simulate the clinical procedure and also introduce you uh, some clinical procedures part in the lectures. And hopefully uh, before the spring break, uh, we will finish all the project and you will be familiar with what the, uh, the removable partial interest looks like. Uh, you can reach all the uh, material on the blackboard uh, under uh, the A DRD8005. You will see a uh, partial dentures uh, icons. And uh, after that, then you will see a schedule, lecture PowerPoint, uh, lecture video, and the form. Uh, you, I uh, used to uh, upload all the lecture PowerPoint uh, onto the backboard before the course so you can review it and then so we can just discuss some several uh, important topic during the class because we don't have enough time to describe all the things in on the class also I uh, record all the videos just like you heard this one uh, on the backboard uh, because sometimes the blackboard is easier to be shut down. So right now I almost upload all the lecture videos uh, on the YouTube. However, um, 
for uh, your info, those uh, link will be private. So you have to really have a link to link to uh, my videos. However, I think that will be more uh, easier for you to approach that. But if you have any difficulty to assess any content or any uh, videos or uh, PowerPoint lectures part, uh, please feel free to contact me immediately and I will check that for you. And the, and the last one is about the form. Uh, so uh, the first two, the RPD design sequence and the KISS principle are the two uh, very important uh, document that you are going to use in the scene lab and then when we reach to that uh, topic, I uh, will introduce you to those two documents. Uh, for the lectures part, um, I also have uh, the whole uh, lectures note which will be easier for you to refer to. And the fourth will be the scene lab manual uh, which I will uh, describe to you how to use that when you in the scene lab for the RPD sections. Uh, I will suggest you, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask me anytime, so send me an email. Uh, however, all the content should uh, also refer to the textbook. Uh, right now, uh, McCracken's uh, Removal Partials uh, Postontics is the newest one that you can find on the market. And also on the right side, the suggested material, uh, the Stewart Clinical Removal Partial uh, Postontics is another uh, very famous textbook. They are not really updated very often but uh, sometimes it's a little bit easier to read uh, compared to the McCracken's one. And also we have a removal partial dental design. Uh, is a syllabus that which were more uh, likely re uh, related to the SYNLAB uh, project that you're gonna practice in the uh, uh, SYNLAB. All the uh, textbook or the suggested material you definitely can find on Amazon and definitely can find in the library. And related to uh, our course, uh, this will be uh, several uh, part of your grades related to that. Um, majorly, uh, this uh, lectures part will be on the left side and the scene lab part will be on the right side. Uh, we will describe what the RPD competencies uh, in the uh, scene lab part uh, when you really into the scene lab. Uh, for my course, uh, for lectures, I will highly suggest you to review all the content before you attend the class. Uh, because that then if you have any questions, I will be more uh, likely and quickly to answer that. So you will get the concept more quicker. And also because I know sometimes the class is very early and you might not be really able to be on time. So uh, if you can refer to uh, the videos and the PowerPoint that I posted, that will be much more easier. You can use uh, your uh, leisure time or free time to read through that. But in a scene lab, because you're gonna do all the work by yourself, so the only um, requirement I ask you is to be on time in a scene lab class, because we just only have three and half hours to finish the project for a week. So it's a very compacted um, content for the scene lab part, uh, especially if you are not really able to finish the project on time, then you definitely will delay the following project. So just be sure you be in the scene lab on time and then to try your best to finish all your project on the same day. Okay, so now I will introduce the first uh, topic of uh, RPD uh, and this lecture is about to introduce you the components of the RPD framework. So this is the RPD framework looks like. It's made by uh, Crown Cobalt's metals, and they will have some part on the identus area, they will have some part on the tubes. And you have to really familiar with all the components and understand why they have to be there. That will make you feel more comfortable when you started your cases in the clinical floor. 
So once you can see they have several numbers and several like a specific topic, one is a major connector, so a minor connectors, and occlusal rest, direct retainer, stabilizing or reciprocal component, indoor retainer. I totally understand when you first hear this uh, terminologies, you don't know what, it, what they are talking about. That's fine. We will have uh, several uh, following topic, uh, lectures to describe each of the component, what they use for, what the difference between each of them, and what the different uh, options or uh, choose that you can use. Today we will just focus on to introduce you the terminology first. So that will be the five important uh, component then into a RPD framework. So first is direct retainer. So what's a retainer means? The retainer is any type of component used to fixation, stabilization, or retention of a prosthesis. So they try to resist the movement away from the tubes or the tissue, provide retention for the prosthesis, so they call direct retainer. So think about that, that you have a partial denture in the mouth and then when you chew the food you definitely the, den the partial denture will try to um, move away from the tooth means that it's dislodgement so you have to have something to hold it by the tooth and that will be the direct retainer when we talk about direct retainer, we also have several terms related to that. One is a bum and tooth, means that the tooth that really have a direct retainer on it. Also, you will see a clasp, you will see a bar, you will see a reciprocal arm, which will describe what's the difference between all of those in the direct retainer's lectures. The second is about the rest and rest seat. So the rest is the component of the RPD on the two surface that provide vertical support. So this rest is to get the vertical support. So remember we just talked about the direct retainer. The retainer is to provide fixation, stabilization, and retention. So one is related to when you chew the food when the denture sinking into a ridge, they have to get a support, that's from the rest. And the other is to talk about when you chew the food that the denture try to dislodge that you need retainer. Also, the rest and rest seed sometimes were easier to misunderstanding or misuse. So the rest is on your framework and the rest seed is on your tooth. So you, if you describe the framework component, that would be the rest. That would not be the rest seat. The third terminology is indoor retainer. So indoor retainer is to talk about when the distal extension denture space try to dislodge it, then they will have a rotations on the focal line and so you have to have something to really stop that uh, rotations happens. That's why we refer this component to the indoor retainers. I know you definitely now really understand what I'm talking about for the indoor retainer. It's fine. We will use uh, uh, several uh, examples uh, when we really talk about uh, the mechanisms and the indoor retainers topic when we really refer to that. Uh, today I will just quickly re, uh, introduce you those concepts. So basically to think you can think the removal partial dentures as like a seesaw. So we have a tooth in the front, we mix the tooth in the back. So we use a removal partial denture to restore the posterior edentrous area. So right now in the front, you have a in, uh, you have a direct retainer to holding by the tooth. So you can think that would be like a fulcrum of the seesaw. So when you try to eat the food, the sticky food will be try to uh, push the denture away. So when they push away, 
and you have a fixed、uh, falcon in the front. Definitely, the the anterior part will be rotated toward to the tooth or toward to the soft tissue, and that's why you have to have some design in front of it to stop this happening. So it's kind of like this graph showing. So you have the falcon that will be in the middle, and on the posterior is coming up. So like the picture shows, you will see the anterior just like a tire. You have to have something in the front to stop it was sinking. Otherwise, that if you don't have that, the front part will touch the ground. So in the mouse, in the front part will touch the tooth and hurt the soft tissue. So that's what happens once the dislodgement com、uh, happens. So in the middle is your direct retainer. That's a holder. On the left side, on the posterior part, that will have a sticky food try to dislodge. So you can think about a people on the、uh, on the behind try to lift all the seesaws up. So you should have something in the front as a supporter. And the supporter is your indirect retainer. So what can? So if you see the RPD framework pictures, you can see that the number three is called occlusal rest. Number six is indirect retainer, and the arrow seems point to the same area. That's correct, because. When we talk about rest, remember that it was the component to provide the vertical support. So sometimes the rest will be acted as an indirect retainer because the indirect retainer is a supporter. So they need something can provide the vertical support. So when you refer to the indirect retainer of the removable partial dental framework, that just only could be the rest. However, not all the rest in the framework will be mandatory acted as an indirect retainer. So you have to know that. So if we just talk about an indirect retainer, the design just could be the rest, but not all the rest will be indirect retainer. The fourth terminology is a dental base attachment. So you already go through the complete dental is dotly in the school, so you you must be familiar with the complete dental. So the complete dental is a dental base without any metal, just have acrylic, have a dental teeth. However, if we look at the part removable partial dentures, then you will see a metal, you will see a quick dental base, you will see a dental teeth. So that should have something that could、uh, hold the dental teeth and the quick dental base with the metal, and that's why we call the dental base attachment. When we talk about a dental base attachment, they work. They could be have several design, like open lattice mesh or the bead. We will describe what's the difference and when you should use that. When we、uh, really into this topic, you will also hear a longer,、uh, unfamiliar term we call the finish line, which you have to very familiar with that when you really go into the framework design or the framework drawing in the scene lab. But you don't really need to worry those right now.、Uh, we will describe those de- in the detail in the following lectures. The fifth、uh, terminology is a major and minor connector. So the connector means is a component try to join the portion of the prosthesis receive the function to select the region throughout the arch. So the major connector is to try to connect it all the component from one side to the opposing side. So it's from right to left and from left to right. So it's like a full arch. Try to use a major connector, and a minor connector is 
those components try to connect it with each individual component to the major connector. So you can see the major connector is the bar or the plate and then crossed all over the arch, try to make sure the right side and left side they are able to combine together. So they will become into just only one piece. And the minor connector is try to connect it like the direct retainer, occlusal rest C or indirect retainer to the major connector. So hopefully after today's lectures, uh, you were familiar with the, those terminology. I know it would be very difficult for the first uh, beginners. However, we will keep continue saying those terminology quite often. So you definitely need to familiar with that so you can communicate with your colleague in the future. If you have any questions, uh, please uh, welcome to send me an email. Uh, or you can reach me at my office hours. Uh, my room is at uh, room 333 on the uh, clinical floor, third floor. Uh, my office hour right uh, now this semester is uh, Wednesday, uh, 1.30 to 4.30.